709 Reasons Why is brought to you by Calman. Hi, welcome back to one of the new episodes of uh, 709 Reasons Why with Portrait Displays. Um, today, we are very happy to have our new special guest, Art Suwan Sang, uh, Global Brand Ambassador at BenQ. Hi, yes, welcome. Hi. Thank you, Marcel. Appreciate being here. So um, we have a couple of episodes and we have a couple of great topics for you guys. And um, the first one today is actually talking about the SW321C. Yes. And Art brought that with him. And uh, maybe before we go more into the weeds of the technology, maybe you want to talk a little bit about yourself and as an artist, not just as an ambassador for BenQ, but right. maybe in the first place as an artist, what you do and why you think monitoring and correct color is so important. So by trade, I am a photographer, and that's everything has to do with color, making sure that people's skin tone looks correct. If you're even just doing a commercial job, I mean, let's say this, if you're photographing a can of Coke, it, there's a certain red that it has to display, and it has to be that red, because the moment that's off, you know it right away, and anyone who's looking at that picture will know. So having good, accurate color is very important, and especially for photography, having amazing color display that can really show you what you're really capturing on camera is crucial. So to me, that's always been the pinnacle of display technology, and I really like BenQ because they have done a really great job I would say democratizing mm -hmm. color accurate displays where now many other photographers can get into this because this is not you know so cost exorbitant that it costs a lens and a camera. It is easily affordable and it's easily attainable by many photographers to get great color. Perfect. I mean, that makes a lot of sense, right? So especially when you say people take care of their equipment, light, lens, camera, mm -hmm. but then maybe the last mile yes. when they start to look at the things they're producing and creating, exactly. I think that's, that's one of the crucial parts, right? Yeah. And, and that's what we want to talk about today. Um, this monitor, by the way, is Kalman Ready and Kalman Verified. But uh, maybe just, yeah, just dive in into this, this product. So um, let us know a little bit more about this thing. So this is SW321C. It is a 32-inch 4K UHD display. And what makes this really unique is that it has hardware calibration capability with a 3D lookup table that's fully adjustable. BenQ guarantees you're going to get a Delta E of less than two from the factory. It comes with its own calibration report. And obviously, they do a lot of really great job calibrating this from the factory. As you know, it is CalMan verified, right? So BenQ sent displays to CalMan. But essentially, this goes through a whole extensive list of validation, making sure that colors and everything is up to Calman standard before they can even put the stamp, the name on it. So this also has an extremely like matte coating on the panel that if you take a look at this display compared to anything else, the pictures I'm seeing right now, even with the light shining on it, it is as if I'm looking at a matted print. And that is one of the things I would say is the best feature of this display. Yeah, it's impressive. I, yeah. I, mean, I can confirm. It's really cool. Yeah. 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 I mean, if you take a light on here and you shine it, there's no reflection whatsoever. Mm -hmm. It just diffuses the light. Maybe let's talk about, you said hardware calibration. I think yes. maybe that's a very interesting discussion point. Yeah. Kind of um, explain maybe the audience to the audience why is hardware calibration so beneficial? What's so important about hardware calibration? So hardware calibration is, I think is crucial to get good accurate colors because Every single variable in your computer system changes the way how the color output is happening. For example, your hardware changes the color, the computer operating system, the drivers manipulate the colors, and any other software you install in there. Hardware calibration, in a way, bypasses all of those, meaning that it's not relying on your computer video card to do the color adjustment as it's coming out from the computer. All the adjustment is actually done through a dedicated chip on the display. So all the color adjustment is technically done on the panel. This way, you can guarantee that regardless of how your computer is sending out colors, there is no tone of compression whatsoever, and you're just getting the best color possible because, you again, it's a dedicated hardware doing that specific one job of getting the color right. Excellent. And I think uh, when we talk about photographers, do you see a trend that photographers are getting more and more, yeah, becoming more and more videographers now these days? I, I can imagine it's not just still photography anymore, right? There's a yeah. lot of requests from customers that want to have video and then suddenly you're quickly in the 4K or whatever domain and then suddenly other topics come up like color grading, color right. correction. Yes. So um, let's talk a little bit about that. What, what happens there? So usually having something like this, I think, is really great because it covers both disciplines. You can go with photography, or if you do video, this works for color grading as well. In fact, I color grade all my YouTube video on this display. 
Okay. So, oh, oh, really? Yeah. So all that you have on your own YouTube channel is done on this? Yep. It's always done. Everything that I edit uh -huh. for the past, I would probably say decade or so, has always been verified and edited on a BenQ SW display. Excellent. If it's not on there, I usually rarely any upload any content just because I can't verify if the colors are good enough or not. Okay, it makes, makes a lot of sense. And I think that's a very important thing that, um, as, you, as you pointed out, Art, like um, there are different modes and different modes are, are matched to specific standards, right? And that's what you, for example, would do with Calman. So you probably would actually decide what is the workspace you want to work in. Mm -hmm. What's the deliverable exactly. you want to create, right? Because yeah. there are different deliverables exactly. probably, right? And so then you can actually pick one of those modes and they are preset already in the factory and you have Adobe RGB as a color gamut or Rec. 709, which is the HD color space, mm -hmm. um, or sRGB, which is the same color space, but there's a different gamma correction. Yeah, exactly. So there are little details sometimes mm -hmm. that even you want to be aware of, exactly. or where you have software taking that hassle out of your equation that you don't have to think about, and then it's automatically loaded and calibrated, right? Exactly. Okay. Um, so that said, let's talk a little bit about Calman maybe for a minute, mm -hmm. because when we use Calman, that's exactly what you would do. This monitor has three different calibration modes that can be automatically pinged by our software. Mm -hmm. So you can have Cal, Cal 1, Cal 2, Cal 3, and then based on what you want to do with this monitor, you could use and utilize Calman to calibrate those picture modes. So for example, you would do one for BT709 for HD, mm -hmm. which has a gamma of 2.4, like a power function. Mm -hmm. And that's what you would calibrate with D65. Yes. Then you would have another one like Adobe RGB. Mm -hmm. That's also D65 white point, yes. but it has a, a 2.2 gamma uh, exactly. Somehow, which is 2.19 something, but it's about 2.2. And then maybe the third one would be, what would be the third one? Maybe kind of an sRGB space probably with a 2.2 gamma? I would say sRGB, maybe DCI P3. Okay. If anyone wants of to get course. into that larger color yes. gamut. I mean, it hasn't become the standard yet. Mm -hmm. It's We're just teetering on the moment when P3 is going to just be the new de facto right. standard for video and photos. Yeah, okay. Makes total sense. So uh, what you probably know from the HDR world or what's done in the video production environment, mainly it's P3 monitors. Mm -hmm. That's absolutely right. But then it's converted. Normally, when you talk about HDR and things, it's going to be converted into the BT2020 color space. Exactly. So they take the P3 primaries and that's converted into 2020 so it becomes a color within the 2020 space. Exactly. And that's also something you could do with Kalman, by the way. So you could pick that standard and calibrate. But um, I think from, well, what are the specs? Um, I think you have it just in your mind, kind of uh, the different color gamuts that are covered by this. So with this one from the factory, you're going to get 99% Adobe RGB, 100% Rec. 109, and also sRGB, along with 95% P3 coverage, which is actually a really good number for P3. Because the P3 coverage, when you have a display that can show 99% Adobe RGB, can vary across the range. Sometimes they're lower, but having something in a 90% range is you know, going to guarantee that you're going to get a larger coverage of that P3 color gamut, which is important. Oh, makes sense, makes sense. So I think, and that's how it works. Normally you have a native color gamut, right? So the, what would be the native panel gamut of that of that particular display. And that uh, the bigger that is, the better you can do hardware calibration exactly. to create a lot or a matrix and then actually display different color gamuts within the native space of what the panel actually can do. That's normally what you want to do. You don't want to do it the other way around. That's the right way to actually do it, right? Yeah. And that gets us back to the hardware calibration. Yes, exactly. And having the hardware calibration is crucial for doing all these I would say color gamut changes and calibrating it in different color gamut because one thing you can't technically do with a software calibration is really due to gamut translation, meaning that if your display is natively 99% Adobe RGB, you can't really go in with just the software calibration and calibrate it into another gamut. Okay, so Art, that was all about the color, but there's more about a display than just color, right? Yes. Like luminance, contrast ratio, uniformity. Uh, Tell us a little bit about those parameters with this display. So let's first talk about the luminance. On this display, the max brightness is 250 nits. As far as contrast ratio, we're looking at about 1,000 to 1 typical. Now, when it comes to uniformity, I want to really highlight this because BenQ has been doing a really great job with every single SW display release. They have been improving the uniformity calibration from the factory, guaranteeing that you're going to get a really even picture or just looking at your creative content from just one corner of the display to the other. And that's a really great thing. 
the other thing that is a byproduct of them working on this uniformity technology as well is when they have done this type of calibration, it also reduces the backlight bleeding on IPS LED backlight panel too. And the black on these panels are really great with a lot less bleeding than there were in previous generation and relative to other displays are out there. Amazing, amazing. And I, I can confirm, I had this uh, a few days and I was looking at this with also uniform patterns and, and like full field patterns and it looks actually amazing, mm -hmm. especially for the price point. Yes, I exactly. I think that's one of the things, right? It's kind of, it's really, really good for the money. Yes. I mean, and, and I think that's another very important aspect. Now, speaking of 250 nits, um, and we don't want to get into the nits arm race here because that's <laughs> yes. kind of always the same discussion, but it's it's not a typical HDR grading monitor. That's what you not would use it for, mm -hmm. but it supports it's HDR, it has support, uh, HDR modes. Yes. Um, like I think for HDR10, I saw it in HLG. Yes. Which would be PQ EOTF mm -hmm. or the HLG EOTF. Yes. Um, what would be a typical use case, for example, from your experience where you would want to use one of those modes? I would probably say if you. This is probably going to be a good secondary display to use in addition to a mastering display in HDR. Let's say you want to see how that transfer function is going to work on a display with less nit brightness on a color corrected display. This would probably be the use case scenario for that. And if you really want to push it, you can maybe try to do some HDR content grading on here too, but the nit factor itself is probably not the right. one that I would recommend to do that, but definitely as a secondary display. But for you know any type of standard, dynamic range, Rexono 9, this is like the best display for it. Well, that's all very impressive art. Um, now, what about uh, um, inputs and interfaces? So what is this monitor supporting and what signals can you actually ingest? So it supports USB Type-C with 90 watt power delivery. It also has two HDMI to support for this one and also full display port that you can bring, you know, connect any type of computer to this really. In fact, if you have a camera that has HDMI output, you can feed it directly into the display too and it'll work. The other thing about this display is that you might want to note as well is that it also supports different frame rates. So for example, if you have videos playing at 24 frames, the monitor will automatically adapt to 24 frames. So there are no tearings, no pull down or anything like that. So there are different frame rate support that goes up to like 60 Hertz or 60 frames per second, but anything below that, this display can adapt to that. Very nice, excellent. Okay, yeah, and I think uh, when it comes to inter interfaces, so it also has a USB-B input, and that would be the one you probably would use if you want to have a laptop with Kalman on it, and yeah. then you connect USB-A from the laptop to USB, B input on this monitor, yeah. and that's then how you establish the communication for direct display control. And yeah. One thing I want to add on to that is that if you're using more of the legacy connection, that would be more of the DisplayPort HDMI, you would need that cable. If you're using USB-C and your laptop supports DisplayPort over USB-C, then that's a single cable and it will also charge your computer as well. Excellent. Cool. All right. So see you later and let us know what you think about this episode in the comment section. See you. Thank you.